Welcome back to Art Discourse. On today's episode, Chrissy and I are going to pull another question. We're going to read that question and then do our best to answer it in whatever way we feel like answering it. We're trying to keep ourselves within like a 10 to 15 minute answering time frame. It's, it's kind of hard. Okay. So on today's episode, let's see. Okay. Well, okay. It's sort of long. So today's question, how does someone coming out of school, coming out of school strongly, make a living and statement out of being an artist? Wait, what? Let me try to read that again. <laughs> today's question. How does someone coming out of school strongly make a living and statement out of being an artist? Make a living and statement. Those are hard, those are hard questions. How do you make a statement out of being an artist? I think that honestly, I feel like when I, when we were teaching and I would say, I'm a teacher, people would be like, I understand that makes sense. But when I say I'm an artist, people are like, huh. Some people are like, whoa, cool. What is that? What do you do? Do you paint? It's always, do you paint? Um, and other people are like, oh, that's hard. What is that like? So I feel like just being an artist is a statement. I don't know if you need to do more. No. That's my answer to that question. Being an artist is a statement, period. Okay, so how does someone coming out of school strongly make a living in statement of being an artist? I think that I'm gonna like kind of maybe ignore this, the, the word strongly here and like just, how do you make a living being an artist? So I think that there are, it, there's a, we can think about it in this way. You are an artist and your art generates zero dollars. Or you are an artist and you generate some of your income through your art. Or you are an artist and you generate all of your income through being an artist. I think that a lot of us would like uh, would like it to be the latter, where we make all of our money through being an artist. Mm -hmm. This doesn't necessarily work for everybody though, because some people like to or need to have a financial security in their life that they can only really achieve through a part-time job or a full-time job and they make art on the side. I think that every individual has to kind of grapple with this of, uh, you know, if you are going to be an artist and make your living solely off being an artist, there is a level of stress that comes with that. Yeah. There's a level of uncertainty. And it can be a lot of feast and famine. It's a lot of famine. Let's be real. <laughs> For some people, I feel like it's a lot of feast. I do think that there is some people that make a ton and then a lot of people that don't make anything. Okay, so if it's about strongly making a living and a statement of being an artist, uh, you know, I think that if you are going to like approach this kind of like problem, let's think about it perhaps logically. If you're going to make a really good living, well, how much is a good living to you? Is it 25 grand a year? Is it 50 grand? Is it 75? Or are you looking to make $100,000 a year off your art? Mm -hmm. And is that before taxes or after taxes? That's a different question. But say, like, if you if you want to make uh, $100,000 off of your artwork every year, you need to make $100,000 worth of product every year. Or least. you need to apply for $100,000 worth of you know, special projects or funding. 
That's you need true. to feel confident that you will secure that, um, those projects and that funding. So yeah, I think determining what your, what you value as success, this is something that comes up a lot for us, is this idea of success. And sometimes for some people, success, we, you know, we've had this conversation, sometimes success is just actually having the liberty to make. And it's not about, does it sell? Do you make money from it? But if you want to be an artist that's making, can you do that? Do you have the space to do it? Do you have the time to do it? Do you have the, you know, the passion and the drive to make? And so maybe just the making itself is that successful living as an artist, that statement of I'm an artist and I'm making regularly. And perhaps you make your money somewhere else. Or is the success and feeling like you're making a living as an artist actually living off of the money you make as an artist? I think the other key component to this is that it says out of school. And that transition period from being in school, sort of the security of space, time, equipment, feedback, peers, um, that shift in itself can be a real adjustment. Okay, so that shift out of school. So like you leave school, you likely have debt, you likely um, have never made a ton of money. Maybe you have. I don't feel like many. Yeah, I mean, we have to remember we're speaking from our personal experience. Everybody's experience is different, so. So how does someone coming out of school, uh, I'm gonna say, make a strong living and statement out of being an artist? Um, I think that I would tackle this project by looking at what my expenses are for the year, making like a very realistic budget for that, and being honest. Like if I'm drinking like fifty dollars worth of booze every week, I'm gonna like write that in there, or like you know like those kinds of things. Right? Sure. I'm not drinking at all. Let's be real. <laughs> So by making a like really strong budget and kind of sitting down to like really look at your finances, you can look at like how much you need to make every year. So like, you know, between rent, between utilities, between your car payments, likely your student line of credit, your like student loans yeah, and everything knows? else, you know, when that adds up, like whatever that comes to is kind of like that is the base amount of money that you need to make. And I think that to make a strong living, you need to have a good command of your finances. And you need to have a good kind of overarching view of what it actually costs to live, not just a question mark. Because once you know what that number is, you can start planning your projects accordingly. If you yeah. know that you need to make $50,000 a year because you need to, whatever, pay all of your bills down, you can start actually trying to plan a production that will meet the demand of $50,000. Now, actually selling 50 grand worth of artwork is a different story, and I think that's like a whole other chapter as well. But a good starting point is getting a hold of your finances coming out of school so that you're not scared of them and that you have a command of them and you can start actually building something to fulfill what you actually need. I so I, I think we're sort of saying like, one, what, what is your situation coming out of school? How are you going to continue practicing as an artist so that you can feel like you can make a living and feel like you're making a statement about being an artist? Can you do that? You know, do you need equipment? If so, where can you source it, etc. Then you need to be realistic about what making a living means to you. Do you want to be making a living solely from your practice? And if so, do you know how much you need in order to live? Yeah, I think that if like if you're gonna go down that route, you move into the world of entrepreneurship, and you need to really kind of draw upon the skills that entrepreneurs draw upon, such as like if a person was to start up a clothing business, they would do a business plan and they would do cash flow projection, and they would have these certain steps. And as an artist, we often glance over the fact that we are businesses, uh, we are a sole proprietor business. Well, and that we like need to pay rent and eat food sometimes also gets a little <laughs> tossed out yeah. the window. Yeah, we're, I, we're almost at our 10 minutes of chatting. I think that there is like also different kind of ways and you can see some of our other videos where we talk about granting and we talk about funding sources. But I think that like, 
depending on what your art practice is, you might fall closer towards the craft end of things or the high end of the high art end of things where you're making really, really unsaleable artwork versus I'm making very saleable artwork. I think I think that goes back to knowing what you're making and what where you're kind of going to place yourself. So yeah, are you um, an artisan who's like working in you know textile surface design that is like creating wearable or housewares yep. or are you creating performance art well, that's or a way better way to earth it. art or installation art where it's very site specific um, and, and probably not purchasable by a person but it could be purchasable by a space because the experience is necessary for that space to fulfill its mandate, like a public art gallery or something like that. I, I hope we answered that question. It's a complicated one and there isn't really a straightforward answer because it's different for every person. Uh, your practice will fall closer to one category versus another category. You might have certain resources in your area that other people don't have resources. Uh, but like, I think my bottom, my advice overall is you get a handle on your finances and that's a very good cornerstone for starting to understand how to make a strong living from what you do. And I would say know, know for yourself what's going to feel like a success so that that statement of being an artist feels successful to you and you know build out the keeping a roof over your head and food in your belly in whatever manner feels appropriate. So we'd love to hear back from you. How do you, all of you go about kind of managing your art careers and do you make all of your living off of your art or do you supplement it with other things? Do you make all of your living just by selling just your art or are you kind of like Chrissy and I where we sell some art, we do some public art installation projects, we ran a residency for a period of time, like we have our hands in a whole bunch of different baskets. I'd love to hear back and just kind of continue the conversation with you. Thanks everybody for watching our discourse. And join us next week for another question. If you enjoyed this video, could you do two things for me? Could you like it? And could you subscribe to our channel? Both of these things help us out tremendously. A big shout out to all of our patrons. Your continued support is amazing and we really appreciate the encouragement to continue making these videos. If you want to become a patron, you can see the link below in the description. Catch you next time. Thanks for joining us.